Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is Christopher Aaron. I am someone who shares research with individuals who are interested. I've been studying these markets since the middle of the last decade or so, and I simply share my findings with individuals who find them useful. So in this video, we will be looking at the impact of what the market is pricing in to be a Fed rate hike this time next week. So we will consider this to be a pre-Fed broadcast. And by the time you hear from me next week, we will have that interest rate decision by the Fed in place already. And we will see what has happened since then. Thank you once again for being with me. It is the 7th of December, 2016. So we have to keep in mind here when we're talking about the Fed and Fed interest rates, which the market is pricing in this rate hike ne next week, the Fed does not simply control interest rates by pushing a button or moving a lever up and down. The way that the Fed manipulates interest rates is by open market actions, which is basically a euphemism, which means they buy and sell bonds. So where do they get the money to buy and sell those bonds? They, of course, print it out of thin air, which is why, all things considered, when the Fed lowers interest rates, it is inflationary because it means they are printing more money, that, which gets circulated into the economy. So one year ago, in December, we had the first Fed rate hike in almost nine years. And we will look at that and put that in perspective. But here is the setup coming into the meeting next week. And this is a three-part graph here. You may need to maximize your screen to really see this. But you have at the top, you have U.S. three-month treasury yields. This is the yield on a three-month T-bill, if you want to call it that. It's a bond good for 90 days. This is how much you will earn per year if you loan the US government money for 90 days. And right now that rate is just about half of 1% on an annualized basis. Keep in mind, this is up from just about 0% even going into October of 2015. Here in the middle, we have the price of gold. And here on the bottom, we have the US dollar as measured against the basket of foreign fiat currencies, which they all are, of course. So we are looking at this from 2014 through the present for all of these markets combined. And this blue line here going down the middle shows the Fed rate hike last year, the first rate hike in nearly nine years. Now, keep in mind, the mainstream media, you will continuously hear this in the mainstream media, that rate hikes are negative for precious metals. And the truth is, it couldn't be any closer to the opposite of that if I was to look for any sort of uh, market that could be as opposite of that statement as possible. So, for example, the first Fed rate hike in nearly nine years, what did that mar mark here on the gold price was almost absolutely the exact bottom for gold, right? So, and then after that bottom at 1050, Gold rose over $300 over the next six months. Here we can see the leading indicator, and this is why this is included here at the chart, in this green circle. Look at what happened to the three-month Treasury yield before that Fed rate hike. In the green highlight circle here, you can see the market, the broad market for three-month Treasuries, the yield had spiked from zero up to one quarter of 1% before the Fed released its interest rate decision. Look at what is happening again here today over the last month in the three month treasury yield market. You have the rate has spiked from about 0.3 up to over 0.5. So you're seeing the same leading indicator signal here from the three month treasury market. The three-month treasury market, at the very least, is expecting a rate hike next week. Now, look at what happened to gold leading into that meeting. As rates were spiking, indicating the Fed was going to raise short-term rates, 
gold was falling. Look at here again today. As these rates are spiking, gold has been falling over the last two months. So if this is getting ready to mark the next Fed rate hike, are we looking at the next bottom setting up here in the precious metals at some point over the next few weeks? This is what we will be watching for after the Fed meeting and for a few weeks going forward. Here at the bottom, we look at the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar basically was trying to break out of this almost two-year consolidation here. And it's coming right back down to the 100 level to retest that level. So we'll be watching this very quick, very carefully. If the dollar fails to hold this 100 level and falls back down, this will represent a false breakout in the dollar, which has very negative implications. And this is all why there's all these cross currents happening right now. This is why I say this is really a time to stay very nimble. You know, these markets are giving certain very bearish signals for gold and silver in the mining uh, sector, but they're also giving these bullish signals. So we really need to watch and see how this plays out here very carefully week to week. So here's the setup for another rate hike. Now, if you ever see anyone tell you in a mainstream news article or someone says, well, no, you shouldn't own gold right now because the Fed is going to raise interest rates, Here's the backdrop. By the way, here is the Fed interest rate, uh, the federal funds rate from 1955 through the present. Okay, you basically had a period of 25 years where interest rates were rising in the series of waves higher. And then you had a period of 35 years in which rates were falling down to what? From 2008 through 2015 the lowest that rates have ever been, ever. And here is that first rate hike from last year, which marked the bottom in gold. So someone says to you, well, no, you shouldn't own gold because the Fed is raising interest rate hikes, uh, excuse me, is raising interest rates, and you may want to point them to this video. Here's what happened during the last Fed rate hike cycle 2003 the fed raised from 1% to 5 and a quarter and here is the price of gold which rose from 325 to 875 over the same time period was a rise in interest rates bad for gold absolutely not let's look at a longer period you may say this was too recent this was not long enough let's look at a longer period 1955 to 1980, the Fed raised from roughly 1% to, can you believe it, 19% on short-term interest rates. And what happened to the price of gold over this same time period? Look at the correlation. Okay, even as far as, look at this surge here from 1972 up through 1975, corresponding to this surge in the price of gold, there was a brief dip back in interest rates back down to this 5% level. What happened to gold? It dipped back as well. The final surge higher is what sent gold into its parabolic final blow off state. Of course, reaching eventually over 850 an ounce on the spike high. So what are people, what is the mainstream media talking about? What are the vast majority of the world's economists talking about? when they try to tell you that rising interest rates are bad for gold, I have no idea. They're either intentionally trying to mislead you or they are simply ignorant of the actual facts, the actual trends that are observable over and over and over again. One more time for reference, where are we now? If interest rates have fallen for the last 35 years and have just begun to rise, what if we are in store for another period like this? I mean, interest rates cannot go that much lower. Yes, theoretically, they could attempt negative interest rates. 
But to say that we need negative interest rates at a time when the stock market is at an all-time high, uh, just it really defies any logic that I can see. Low interest rates are supposed to be for crisis situations. You have right now interest rates that are still lower than they were during the Great Depression of the United States. So what is going on here? Are things really that bad in the mainstream economy? If we have another cycle of rising interest rates that has just begun, that is going to last for the next 20 to 30 years, it is quite possible that the precious metals market is setting up for a similar long-term bottom as it saw in the 60s through the early 70s, essentially when it broke the suppression mechanism that was holding the price of gold at $35 throughout the 1960s. That was suppression. That was a fixed price that was unsustainable. The rise in interest rates corresponded to gold breaking that artificial standard. So there is no official artificial standard right now. If there is suppression going on in the precious metals, which we know there is, Deutsche Bank is settling its suppression lawsuit. Several other banks are not settling and they could be facing some serious long-term litigation that remains to be seen how that works out. But it is quite possible that gold is in the process of breaking this long-term suppression that has been going on for the last five years as interest rates rise. Thank you very much for watching, and let us keep in mind that this does not mean that gold is going to spike immediately on the day of an interest rate hike. Sometimes there's a delay. We are talking about long-term setups here. Our research that is published once per week, in addition to flash updates, will be identifying for traders and investors the bottom when it appears. In addition to signals for the GDX, research on individual miners, all the buy and sell signals that I'm using for my very own money right here. I also do individual consultations for those people who require a researched, independent perspective from someone who's not just going to tell you buy, 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 even as the prices are going down, but who will tell you things as they truly are. Thank you once again. I'll see you this time next week after the Fed decision.